Welcome back everybody! Today we are going to find out why are so many European royal families German by History Matters. This video got 2 million views in 10 months, so it must be good. And I don't know much about royal families in, in Germany and Europe. The only thing I know is that the most part of the British royal family is German. But are there any other countries with German royal family heritage? I don't know. Let's find out. In 1914, all of these countries in Europe were ruled by monarchs. And yeah. these were ruled by monarchs of a German royal family. Wait, really? That's Norway, Denmark, Russia, Greece, even Bulgaria, Romania. That's a lot of countries. Quite a lot. <clears throat> and given that some of these rulers could trace their houses back a thousand years and others mere decades, why were so many of them German? So a lot of this can be explained by one thing. The late unification of Germany. At the turn of the 18th century, the German-speaking parts of Europe weren't unified like the French, English That's or Spanish-speaking parts. German -speaking part. It was divided into numerous smaller states, many of which had their own monarchies. And these monarchs would marry off their kids to whoever would have them. A Prussian princess married the Prince of Orange, a Brunswicker Duchess married the King of Denmark, a Badener Duchess married the King of Sweden, and one from Mecklenburg married the King of the United Kingdom. Given okay. that all of these monarchies only really paid lip service to their overlords, the Holy Roman Emperors, there wasn't much risk in marrying them. Whereas marrying someone in the French royal family could cause issues with inheritance, which France, unlike the small German states, could press. Hmm. And, over time, childless or female heirs would mean a near relative would succeed the throne, and they would be a member of their father's often German house. But what about countries individually? Well, the United Kingdom's monarchy had previously been Anglo-Saxon, French, Welsh and Scottish. After a flirt with Catholicism, English nobles called upon William of Orange to seize the throne from James II. He did, and Catholics were then banned from becoming ruler. William also did- What? Catholics were banned from becoming ruler? What? Is that a thing? ...have any children, and so the throne went to his sister-in-law, Anne. She continued the streak of not having an heir and died childless, Why did they and so fall? the throne passed to her cousin's son, George of Hanover, her closest Protestant relative, thereby beginning the Hanoverian dynasty, which would be succeeded by the saxe coburg and Gotha dynasty, which would oh, soon boy. after change its name to Windsor when all things German suddenly became less popular. In Denmark, throughout most of its history, its monarchy was an elective one. But when King Christopher III made the mistake of dying without an heir, the nobles had to pick somebody new. As such, they chose Christian, who was the son of the Duke of Schleswig, a region with a sizable German-speaking minority which Denmark had a close relationship with and one it wanted to keep. This began the House of Oldenburg, which still reigns to this day and also in Norway. Although what? Norway chose... They reign to this day? ...as a Danish prince for their throne when it split from Sweden in 1905. The German and Austrian imperial families both had their origins in the Holy Roman Empire. The Hohenzollerns were from Zollern, here, and the Habsburgs were unsurprisingly from Habsburg, here, in what's now Switzerland. Both slowly over the centuries increased their holdings and titles, from counts to dukes to archdukes and kings before emperors. There wasn't a lot of opportunity for outside royal houses to advance in the Holy Roman Empire, and so these families just stayed German. The last major power which had a German royal family was Russia. Peter the Great was a Romanov, as was his daughter, Empress Elizabeth I. She died childless and the throne passed to her nephew, Peter III. <laughs> Did just fall down all the time and die. Peter's father was the Duke of Holstein and thus he was a part of that house. Now, Peter and his wife Catherine kept the name Romanov to tie themselves to their empire and its people. And that royal family stayed in power until, you know, a thing happened. So what about all of these smaller nations? Well, these nations all came into existence in the 19th century with the oversight of the great powers, who, as a result, got to choose who would be king. The first was Greece. Britain, France and Russia all had a stake in the new country, and thus they all what? wanted an ally on the throne. As such, after their first- What do you mean they had a stake in the country? What does it mean? The choice said no, they picked Prince Otto of Bavaria, who wasn't aligned with any of them. Next was Belgium, which, as a buffer state between Prussia and France, couldn't be aligned with either. As such, the British chose Leopold of saxe coburg and Gotha, husband of the king's niece, to keep the two close to ensure Belgium's independence. Romania had a German monarch after its first ruler, a native Romanian became somewhat despotic and was overthrown in a coup. The new country had only recently broken away from the Ottoman Empire. And so, to maintain its independence, its nobles picked a prince from the Prussian Hohenzollern royal family. This essentially guaranteed their independence from Russia, the Ottomans and the Austrians next door. And for Bulgaria, the reasons were similar. At first, it was ruled by the nephew of the Russian emperor, but he got himself overthrown after being terrible. He was replaced by an Austrian-backed candidate, which unlike Romania was fine because Austria-Hungary wasn't on the border with them. 
and after this these royal families remained in place until either today or their eventual ousting in the 20th century. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for making this video History Matters. But it's so confusing. How can one just keep track of all this? You know, I don't even know how to write this the script for this video. There's so much to keep in mind, so many royal families. And uh, the thing I wonder is how many of those royal families still exist today? You know, you never hear about them unless it's like the royal family in Britain that occasionally like comes to the media. But in Germany, for example, we had so many kingdoms and you never hear about any of them like in, in media. Yeah, not in TV, not in social media. It's like, do they still exist? Are they extinct? What happened to them? Hmm? Or do they just want to be private, you know? Or did they go broke? Yeah, this would be a nice topic for a new video. If anyone who makes these videos, watches this, make a video about what happened to the royal families nowadays. That's what I want to know. And yeah, it's crazy to me that they installed the rulers in newfound countries. That's just crazy. But still, very nice video. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to History Matters. And uh, with that said, see you guys tomorrow.